when you left school, where was your first place of work? Yeah, first place uh, uh, I started on, which didn't last very long, was uh, out at um, Bally Cassidy, uh, 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 where the uh, where Bally Cass is now, and um, uh, beside the airport, and uh, there was a, a Dutch guy called Frank Peter started a, a picture frame factory there, and was in the very early days. Then he eventually moved in, I think, up to Chanter Hill. I think he, he had premises there somewhere near beside where the MOT centre is, somewhere there. But I, I wasn't there. I only lasted about, uh, I think, about three months in it. <laughs> I didn't really. I didn't. Uh, he, he was an unusual sort of a guy, and uh, uh, we didn't really maybe hit it off. And I just, my first job, uh, I really didn't know what I was at, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so what did you go on to do then? Then, um, then I was unemployed for a time, and... and, and uh, 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 Supplementary benefit, I think it was on, and um, uh, of course, then I, I, I had, um, uh, was playing golf a bit more. I used to then go out into Black Lion and get a lift out or something. Uh, um, when did I, yeah, I'm trying to think when I learned to drive then. Yeah, um, I was about 18, I think I wasn't, yeah, I was about 18 and a half before I got a license, so then I was able to drive myself. But um, um, yeah, so. Um, uh, as I said, then uh, I, uh, my old dad would have known Freddie Cathcart. Uh, Cathcart uh, had a hardware shop now where McDonald's is. Uh, I, I went in there and uh, I was there for, uh, I suppose, um, about nine months or so. And then my dad, of course, worked in, 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 in uh, the post office telephones, which is now uh, British Telecom. So those vacancies came up in that. And uh, 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 I was, uh, well, it, it, it helped that I um, had uh, uh, my father or would able to tell me things about, I suppose then when I went to the interview, I had a, bit, a wee bit of a head start of other people, you know, uh, 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 as such. So that, <clears throat> that, that helped. And um, then was that, that was my employment then for, for 17 years. Well, you would certainly notice the difference between the changes that have happened with telecommunications. Oh, oh yes, yes, uh, vastly. Yes, as I say, because uh, in the Down Street Exchange, uh, 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 where I started a telephone exchange, uh, it was, as I say, uh, built just before the Second World War. And um, uh, it was a semi-automatic in that people in a skilling even when my dad started uh, in 1939, uh, they, could, they could call each other within sort of the, the, the middle of the town. But anything outside that, then you had to go through. You had to, it used to be in the old days, you dialed O, and then if it came then later, you dialed 100, and that got you the operator. Uh, telephone, or telephonist would have, would have been called a telephone operator. And um, uh, as I say, um, it, um, if anyone uh, probably would remember the old uh, post offices, especially down south, uh, they had a little switchboard uh, in, in the post office or in the shop or wherever it was. Uh, but Iris was uh, um, 10 or 12 times bigger than that and much longer, a bigger, bigger room and everything. And that was specifically for connecting telephone calls as in, in the wee post office. It was a post office and a shop sort of thing. So um, it was a personal service because uh, 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 you had time to help customers. As time went on, uh, when we, we left in 1984 from um, Down Street over down to the, the Broad Meadow area uh, where the uh, telecom building is now, um, there was uh, statistics taken and you had, uh, uh, you had a handling time with the uh, person, the subscriber ringing in or whatever, and you had to have all that done in a certain length of time. In the old days, it, no. It, well, what we did have in the early days when I did a wee bit of supervising myself, it was, uh, again, I'll explain between day and night. Uh, 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 night time was mostly, mostly male, and we had ladies who were part-time, and during the day was basically... 98% uh, female, and um, uh, what we did uh, to what you call speed of answer, I would 
stood up in a wee chair and with a stopwatch and I see a, a call coming up in a wee light. So I, I pressed that and that and it's how long it took one of the operators to answer and then to the night. <laughs> Sometimes it wasn't quite accurate. <laughs> At night time, as I say, things were a little bit more relaxed. Daytime is purely business and it was run in a business format, but at night time, uh, we certainly looked after our customers well, but we had a degree a little bit of what you call personal flexibility to go a wee bit further with, with someone that was in difficulty or, and help them out. And of course, you had to be courteous all the time. You could, some people would be very offensive to us, but they were in the minority. Most people were fine. <laughs> Would you have any funny stories that you remember? Oh yeah, well it's, I remember when we uh, it's, um, on a Sunday uh, or from uh, 6 o'clock on Saturday right through to 8am on Monday morning the evening staff or night staff were they did the whole day during the Sunday so uh, sometimes you know I remember uh, one call there was a, a lady from somewhere around Florence Court and uh, I, I, you see, uh, so I had uh, uh, put the, 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 the a little uh, junction, and you, they were all spring loaded and uh, calling car. There were cords, and the wee light came on, and there's a wee hole underneath it. And so I said, "Number, please." And this wee lady came on. And she says, "Hello, son." She says, <laughs> "I says yes, hello. What can I do?" Uh, oh, she says, "Now, I I have I have uh, uh, ringworm." On, on my leg, she says, and I understand, she says, there's a, a lady in Kelty Clocker, do you know where that is? I do, yes, she says, up near Loch Mel Melvin, you see. I say, yes, she says, that's right, but she is a cure for ringworm, you see. I say, is that great, right. Well, what do you know her name? What? Well, she, it was Sunday afternoon, and at that certain time, some small uh, post offices weren't open. So, uh, you only had your, you had the, the Garda, uh, it was number, there were single numbers, one was the Garda, or no, one was the post office, two was the Garda usually, uh, three would have been the doctor, uh, four would have been the, maybe the clergy, um, and then uh, five or six might have been the pub, <laughs> whatever, uh, and things like that. So, right, well, I says here, I'll, um, I'll connect you to the Garda Barracks. What that did? Oh, she says, that would be great, son, anyway. So, uh, what I had to do then, I had to get a line then to Sligo Exchange. That was the nearest big exchange, the same size as we were, uh, uh, basically in Skillen. So then I said, um, can you put me through to, uh, to the Garda? And uh, you see, right. I said, well, now you'll be through to Sergeant so-and-so on the desk, you see. So that was fine. So, um, off the record, so to speak, you see, so I would answer all the calls and then we had a key, a key so to speak, to the person or we could pull it back and we could monitor the call but they couldn't hear us. So I just pulled the key back and, uh, and I overheard the sergeant saying, oh, that's right, Mrs. McGoldrick, I sure I know her well myself. So we'll have a squad car. What's your name, ma'am? <laughs> so, 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 so that was it. Ah, so we send that up. Now she has no telephone, you see. Right, right. So anyway, that was fine. I was talking more about it and the call finished. And then, I don't know, it had been 10 days or so after that, this call came through to the supervisor's desk. Oh, there's someone, uh, <coughs> Ken Thompson, the supervisor, and uh, he says there's a lady here that was, was speaking to someone about uh, Sunday week ago. About, and she says, thanks very much. That says, so I went through the wee phone, uh, an ordinary telephone, the desk, uh, and she says, that was great, son. Thank you very much for your time. Very much appreciated. And I've got uh, the, the, the cure now, and it's, it, 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 it's fading away, and I feel a lot better. And that was it. Very good. So that was, that was really what I would call personal service. Absolutely. Yes, yes. You see, uh, uh, now, during the day, if that wee lady would have come through, they just wouldn't have had time to do that. Mm -hmm. We would have had a certain uh, time uh, during... Uh, it wasn't overly busy, yes. We had to get our call, calls answered, but that was... When you had a little time and things were a little bit slack, well, then you could do something like that. But it wasn't a, a general thing, you know, really, but it's just the, it's the way that it happened. <laughs> well, for young people nowadays, it's all mobile phones. Oh, yes, it's so... So, back then, how did people go about making their calls? Yeah, well, as I said, you see, if uh, 
there was a, as the, the, what they call the STD, subscriber trunk dialing, that was direct dialing, that started to come to come on uh, uh, more and then they didn't need the operator and then of course when, when the uh, South of Ireland joined the, the common market at that time, they got big subsidies to, to upgrade all their uh, equipment and uh, that was our, our demise really. But um, basically, uh, if certainly unless um, uh, Dublin, Dublin would have been the first place where really you could dial direct down south. Uh, it, it, it came in probably uh, sometime, I would say, about, um, yeah, 1976-77, uh, uh, around about that time, uh, there was a certain uh, places within the business centre of Dublin you could dial direct, but in the periphery you couldn't. So basically, if you are making a call down, so or across the water for that matter either, um, uh, uh, some of the more rural areas, you had to dial 100, and um, I would plug in and answer the call and number, please. And uh, <coughs> and uh, yes, uh, uh, what is your number? So we had a little ticket tickets changed over the years, and uh, the last ones really we had were uh, there were about. Uh, three inches before and there was a, like a grid on it with a rows of numbers and you just put uh, uh, your uh, pencil uh, who used pencils still then and you just put a wee, a, a wee cross through his number you see and you started off um, well our, our, our code here and in the skillin it's all changed now but it was it was easy because it was 0365 same number of the days of the year and then of course it's now it's 028 and stuff like that but um yeah, so, and then we got the caller's number, wherever they were calling from, and we just put, say, it was my number. Uh, when, start, when I started in, there were only four figures, uh, so mine was 2358, so bang, bang, you see. So then, right, uh, and where are you calling to? Um, it's, say, uh, somewhere uh, Slough in Buckinghamshire. There's another funny, <laughs> I just had to that, uh, when the Chinese restaurant opened in Inniskillen, and uh, so, uh, Silver Lock, called there was a, in fact it was there when I was at the model school so anyway so there was new people took over another family and their English wasn't great and um, they came on and they said oh, oh, um, uh, I went through to uh, four two one two uh, slug I said slug right uh, it was just yeah uh, England slug yeah right how, how do you spell that uh, S Oh, it's slow. Uh, no, no, slow. <laughs> right, okay, I said, okay, that's fine. You're, well, you're ringing out your three now, go ahead. But, you know, that's just, it's just couldn't, like, as we all uh, uh, incorrectly pronounce place names, so it's quite on, you know, things like that, you know, and, and, and uh, um, so, um, so then you had your telephone, uh, telephone kiosks, as they were called, you know, you just, and, and, and uh, that's when it was uh, the, the, vet, the veterinary people used them a lot before they got the radios in their car and, and, and when they would go out on a call then um, they would call to the, uh, the nearest telephone kiosk and they would ring back uh, and send any more calls and, and so we, we got to, used to, especially in the evening times a lot with, uh, would have been Cole Welsh, uh, my dad would know Cole very well, his son um, Chris is, is now a vet as well so we got to know a, a lot of the vets and we got to know a lot of the doctors as well because we on Sundays there used to be one uh, doctor on and um, when they would dial um, to the, their your local doctor's number it would come through to the telephone exchange and we would say it's uh, Dr. Armstrong, Dr. Allen or <coughs> Dr. Foster is on call at the moment and they would, we, we would tell them that. So we used to do a, sort of a switching service and then uh, it, it, it would switch to one one number and then they got through to there and things like excuse me like that you know so uh, and then we used to there was exercises as well the um they're disbanded now but then they come back at the present situation uh, uh the royal observer corps they, they they did exercises on sundays when we were there during the day and we had a switching system that they would they call a private wire that they would use for communications and was specifically um for for them and it wasn't open to the general public this was a, a an exclusive line that they used i mean you used to have to set that up 
and yeah. then and take it down again. And then also the bookies shops. The bookies had had a private wire line as well. And why was that? That was that was to do uh, uh, with uh, uh, from um, the uh, uh, some of the race meetings, and it, it was set up by post office, and um, yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, so um, that they had, they wouldn't have. And when times would get very busy, the lines would get overloaded at certain times. That they had a exclusivity for that. But they had to pay a fee, I think, to to the post office telephones at that time. So again, that was that was usually in evenings. Sometimes um, when there's evening meetings on the longer days, that that was set up. And then uh, so um, that have been Jones's bookies here probably, and and uh, who else? What the uh, the um, uh, <coughs> uh, McGovern's bookies and stuff like that. But then it's all over by Land Brooks now. But um, things like that, um, and. Um, but generally, as I say, uh, it, it, it was a very interesting uh, job, and um, I, 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 I still like talking to people, as you're aware, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I find that uh, uh, sometimes you <clears throat> you used to talk that much, and it got so busy that you know you would get a wee bit hoarse sometimes, and uh, I, I, I still uh, you had what you call a headset. Now it's it's, it's not like things now that are almost fit into your ear like a hearing aid. This was a sort of a, it was it was like a um, the top of it would have been like a, a wire coat hanger type thing and, and it would sort of expand and then there was a little thing here and then whatever if you were right ear or left ear there was only one and then you had a, a mouthpiece as time went on they got lighter and smaller uh, and um, you had that that's how you communicated. Uh, uh, as time then when they got more modern you could adjust the level of sound and things like that and um, uh, but it, it then when we went to the new exchange then things got a, a lot more modern and uh, we didn't have cords it was uh, sort of little switches and buttons and things like that but it was an end of an era when we left the old telephone exchange we we, we um, I'll just say this we we, we had a party uh, the night uh, it, it closed and then the next morning but uh, it was an incredible <laughs> thing that happened there but I can't really expand too much on that <laughs> it was a fun night <laughs> keep, keep that to yourself yes Gordon. yeah <laughs>